This video is brought to you by Diamond Pacific Tool Corporation. Diamond Pacific is America's favorite diamond tool, wheel, and lapidary machine manufacturers. For nearly half a century, Diamond Pacific has set the industry standard for diamond lapidary equipment. Join the majority of professional lapidaries and choose Diamond Pacific products such as their Nova Wheels, Pixie, Genie, and Titan Gem Makers, as well as their wide selection of other high quality lapidary diamond products. Check out Diamond Pacific today and find out why they're considered America's premier diamond lapidary tool manufacturers. All right, folks, so yesterday we did the ring of this Coliseum. That's less than a tenth, unfortunately. It's gonna be a long day. Down here are some awesome fossils and some specimens. I know a little bit of everything, but then this room goes into that room, and then there's just an outside section and multiple stories of warehouse section. Try to not film too many other people that we filmed before, but you know, this is a great year. I think it's the largest year for vendors that I've ever seen in Denver. Second largest amount of people I've seen at Denver. This show is getting so big. It's fantastic. I love it. And there's a bunch of Ambers, also Dominican. The Dominican Amber is fantastic. It has that Amber look. Look at the back. Is that an impression of the tree? With amber, much like garden cords or like, oh, some rutile and other materials, you don't want to polish the back off because it pops through. Really cool. I think my favorite is Chiapan amber, but, you know, all of it's cool. Here are some... Tabasco geode slices. These beautiful little mini geodes from Tabasco, Mexico. And uh, you usually don't see these sold rough. There's two people that are selling these rough. Everybody wants to buy Tabasco geodes rough because you can slice them yourself. That's the thrill. Some people don't mind them, you know, sliced and roughly polished, but. I think most people want to buy them rough. And it's the Guzman family from Aguas Calientes is bringing them over. They've been at the Kino show. And also, uh, someone else I saw on Facebook. But I'm really excited to pick up a couple of kilos of these rough. You know, charge $5 for random slices. Some are winners, some are not. And then charge a buck to polish them if they want them polished. That's really fun. A nice interactive thing for folks to do online. And you get some awesome mini geodes. I've had people for many years ask me uh, for unsliced Tabasco geodes. And there's just really, you don't see them unsliced very often. I think I've seen them one time. Uh, a vendor selling a small section of unsliced ones. Sometimes you see people selling them sliced and not even paired up. Like just a bunch of odds and ends and that, that's a real bummer. But they're pretty cool. Is this Libyan glass? I don't I never see it that big. Yeah, it's rare. How big have you seen it? Holy smokes. And that must be really rare. Super. Oh, that's fantastic. Super. You make an amazing sculpture out of that, huh? Yeah, no, absolutely. It would be hard to want to chop it up, though. Oh, wow. Yeah, I wouldn't want to chop it up. Huh? I'd be sad. That is stunning. Thanks for yeah, sharing. Yeah, I really love Levine Gas. My grandpa likes to carve scarabs out of these. It's, um, even though it's a glass, the cleavage is a little weird. So it doesn't break very easy in our experience. I've only capped it, but my grandfather sculpts it all the time. Really cool stuff. These pine cone looking things. These are, are they an iron concretion or something? Yeah, like they're iron pseudomorph concretion. And they have another name that like the prophecy, stone. prophecy stone. Yeah. Very cool. 
iron pseudomorph. Looks like a pine cone. Really cool. <laughs> Some of them are kind of conical. But I like them a lot. These strands are really cool. That one right there. That's a great one. I really, really like these. This gentleman is uh, selling a lot of this stuff, and a lot of people are really into this who are into metaphysical stuff. When we were vending um, at Tucson this year, a couple folks from our booth were absolutely infatuated with these. They're really, really cool. This one's nice and tight and spiky. Are these like Moroccan or something? Oh, very cool. Super cool stuff. Are these more of them? Yeah, here's the big assortment of them. Very cool. Have you ever find any that you cut and have any kind of? Um, I think I've seen the inside of one of them. It's just like sand. Yeah, it's just like sand. I might have to cut one open just to see what's inside. Here's some corundum. Would you consider this ruby or like corundum? Uh, I think it's ruby just because it's red and pink. Right. It, it glows pink. Oh, yeah, it's UV uh, reactive, huh? Yeah. Awesome. Just Are they all cut to have? Tomato. Oh, true. Are they all cut to have the star flash on them? Yeah, yeah. They they polished them in India, where they're from. Partially polished. Awesome. There's a good story of folks over there in India from back in the ancient times that would actually use these in slings. They're super hard. Supposedly like a nine on the hardness scale, roughly. Since it's mineralized, it can vary. <coughs> But, um, yeah, you would not want to get nailed with one of these. Super duper dense. Makes sense why they would use it as a uh, projectile. This one's cool. You can see the ruby growth there with the lines. Totally awesome. And these people are really cool, too. These are nice. These are... Indonesian pseudo tectites, I believe. Maybe they're just regular tectites. Um, I don't remember much about these. Sometimes these can cut green. They kind of, just when they're looking in the bin, are uh, they look like obsidian, but they're not. It is some kind of pseudo tectite, I believe. It might be. Uh, the gentlemen are busy over there, so I can't really bug them at the moment. They're busy with paying customers. But those are cool. Look very similar to the Saphrodite or the Chinamani stones. Really? I don't know if metaphysically if they're the same. They are really cool though. Here's a cleaved one. It looks pretty much just like obsidian. But it is different. African amethyst. Some of my favorite. Very expensive. I see this material go for anywhere from $250 to $600 a kilo. I beg your pardon, brother? Yes. What can I help you? I don't want to keep bugging you, but no th these are from Indonesia, right? Yes. These are Agni Manatai. They're from Indonesia. They are a form of uh, tectite as well. Really cool stuff. They kind of look like those saffrodites a little bit. A little bit. They do have some of that same uh, coloration. Too. It's where they pass light. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Really cool. Uh, Saphrodite is known for that really clear glass. And, you know, Moldavite's got chromium, so it's green. Mm -hmm. It's just bald in this heck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. What is the name of them again? Agni Menatite. Agni Menatite. Uh, 
Pearl of Fire, I believe. Is yeah, that that's it. it. Yeah. Cool. That's what it, like loosely what it translates to. Oh, cool. Awesome. And these are African, right? Um, possibly. Those are actually. These are fantastic. They're really cool. Yeah, these are from uh, Jabuku Mine and uh, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Oh, fantastic. Zimbabwe. They're kind of known for the scepters over there, right? Yeah, yeah they're really good. Sometimes you get in hydros in them too, right? I, yeah. I think I, I met a gentleman yeah. that Tucson who only sold these outside the Red Lion. And he had a great spiel about them. <laughs> about like villagers mining them and stuff. Oh, nice. But oh, the only thing I can remember is that they were kind of known for. Uh, a lot of having hydro. This one's got a skeleton. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really cool. It almost did it on the big side too. No one needs to be faced like that. Known for the scepters. That one's really gnarly. Like that edge, you know? I haven't even really sat down and looked at these yet. Yeah. You should go to Africa and go get some. <laughs> right? <laughs> that would be. One heck of a trip, I'll tell you what. That would be content, also. Yeah. Film the whole sure. thing. Yeah. Like Netflix. Make a documentary, yeah. yeah. Becoming the mind. Yeah. Very beautiful. I have a huge soft spot for these African amethysts. So I don't know if I got it on film earlier very well. The skeletal the gentleman was talking about was this spot right here. You'll see this a lot on Herkimer diamonds. Um, not so much on like, let's say, Arkansas quartz. <laughs> very, very cool. And then these look like Colombian. I'm I'm I too much. I've been seeing it a lot lately. If you're going to get in the crystal business, especially if you're going to do online sales, yeah, stay away from lapidary goods. Focus on crystals, mineral specimens, okay. Keep in touch. and uh, different types of specimens. These, you know, everybody can buy, let's say, like the spheres over there, like those glass spheres or those, or it's more, you know, like just the everyday tchotchke stuff. You can get that anywhere. And even if people have a bunch of quartz, they don't have that one that's special and that shape and the one that talks to them. So I think trying to make a living, especially if you're getting in the scene, before you go and drop a bunch of money on a bunch of uh, amethyst and nephrite pumpkins maybe consider getting into specimens also you're carrying a lot less you know these gentlemen here they have a great spread of all different kinds of minerals they're not focusing on lapidary goods you won't see any like you know gemstone snakes or male members and stuff like that just fine specimens Juicy tans and Oh, jeez. That is stunning. If someone doesn't buy it this week, I'm going to buy it for myself. Oh, nice. You deserve it. <laughs> it's so juicy. Maybe the gentleman went mine. If I held it, it's a little sketchy for me because it's hard to grab people's best things, you know? And then I'll put it down here and I slide it over here because I do not want to drop that. Um, tanzanite, to my knowledge, is actually a zoocyte that was na that was naturally heat treated by a wildfire. Um, they can artificially heat it; it doesn't look that nice. That is super duper specimen grade, and uh, something special for sure. Anyway, while we're here, here's their cards. Earthworks, Stone Griffin, owner and operator. 
out of Atlanta, Georgia. Check them out on Instagram. There's no way their Instagram is not fantastic with all of this kind of stuff. Very cool. Is this red guy a spin now? Crystal specimens. Let me slide it in here. Beautiful tourmalines. This one doesn't have a stand. Yeah, you know, it's so much easier bringing stuff like this, and it sells just as good as like this kind of stuff. You know, you're gonna make dollars here fast, where, you know, you can make hundreds here, a little bit slower, but in my opinion, it just, it would feel so much better. Look at that in there. Pyre on one side, quartz on the other. These gentlemen are way too busy for me to bug, but that is fantastic. Um, excuse me, sir. What are these? Oh, cool. That's what I thought. I thought they were celestite, but I'm so used to seeing it, like, in these large, just mineralized forms, not so much terminated in their crystal form like this. This piece is special. Break off any of the mineral, oh, no. mineral growth on there. So I can angle my camera. Just so get a cool look. Uh, that double one over there. It's like a alien head. Oh, look at that! Great angle too. I really like. Is that using tiles or is that like masonite? backing or something? It looks great. This is beautiful. Love that. their stands and that they're not just using like everyday iron stands they're using something really cool anyway that's earthworks check them out on instagram you know they got a great instagram from all the cool stuff they have here out of atlanta georgia georgia are you stone griffin i am awesome <laughs> oh man i get lost at one booth so easily this video is brought to you in part by Cutting Edge Supply Company. Cutting Edge Supply is your one-stop shop for all things lapidary and jewelry making tools. Cutting Edge Supply Company has a wide selection of lapidary equipment, jewelry making tools, findings, gemstone rough, and much, much more. Cutting Edge Supply is a company ran by jewelers and lapidaries for jewelers and lapidaries. Check out Cutting Edge Supply. I love them and you will too. Make sure to use product code LAPIDARYDAVE in checkout to directly support the channel. Snake. I love snakes. All these East Indian and Pakistani minerals. Some apophyllites and aquamarines. I love Pakistani minerals.
there's some is it Kunzite or Morganite? Got a great education on uh, Kunzite and Morganite at the Paula Chief Mine in, in Southern California. And uh, as many of you may know, Morganite is named after J.P. Morgan. And then uh, I think the gentleman Kunz, who Kunzite is named after, actually named the Morganite um, after J.P. Morgan himself. Very cool. Here are some lower quality pieces, but still beautiful. Five dollars a gram. And is it fifty percent off? It kind of looks like it used to be. <laughs> Maybe it is still. Maybe you gotta ask for it. Here are some higher end pieces. There's a nice blue one. These are ten dollars a gram. Making something like this, oh, maybe fifteen to two thousand dollars. No, probably more than that. There's a scale right here. Let's check it out. So yeah, fifteen. Uh, $1,560. I'm sure he would take $1,200. bucks. probably take a grand. Honestly. Money talks. What a fantastic crystal. Not just because it's in my price range. It definitely helps, but I do like the little ones just as much. Look at this aquamarine. Seven hundred dollars. The backing looks fantastic. Coming through, it looks like an alpine tree in the winter time. In the snow, like an evergreen in the snow. That is a very special piece. Has it been polished? I can't really tell. Maybe not. Super lovely pieces. This gentleman is... Oh, Kyber Gems. I know this person. This person's at the 22nd Street Show. You're at the 22nd Street Show, right, my friend? Uh, You're at 22nd? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember I you, my remember friend. You, man. I know you. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the gentleman's info. Very cool guy. Awesome high quality materials. Uh, Kyber, I think a lot of people who aren't familiar with Kyber minerals might be familiar with Kyber Pass um, firearms. <laughs> they make a lot of like clone firearms with like drill presses and uh, files. Really collectible, really sketchy. Probably wouldn't want to shoot them. Uh, but totally awesome. Show that? Oh. I gotta start reading these signs before I start touching stuff. Here's the jet. Also pretty dusty. Really nice stuff though. It's cool to see foreigners selling slats. Uh, you don't see a lot of that. Um, most people just bring finished goods. It's less weight. Like, it's a box of rocks this gentleman has to carry around. These are star... I call them star lights. Where I live in Taos, New Mexico, we have some of the best star lights in the industry that are more of a Celtic cross. These ones are more like the St. Anthony's cross. They're still pretty cool. Uh, pretty cheap, $18. 
our starlights that grow in Taos, New Mexico, have a lot more aluminum and garnet than others. And uh, they can go for about $120 an inch. But these are really cool. Are these from Russia? Yes. Fantastic. I'm going to have to get one for Lenny. Which one should we get? They're all the same price. It's personal preference at that point, right? How about that one? Do you take a card, my friend? Okay, I'll come back with some cash. Absolutely. That's a great one. I try to grab things for Lynn uh, from Russia. She's not, probably won't be able to go back to Russia. It's just, she's super busy. And she uh, spent a lot of time in, in Russia doing folk dancing. Yeah, Russian minerals are some of my absolute favorites. Astrophilite. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Is this very soft? Yes. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Here's some seraphonite. A lot of people think that this is like a green char, right? But it's not. Not only is it not from the same place, it's also chemically not even the same, right? Yes. Right. It's still really, really cool. They do kind of grow in some cool looking flowers. I don't know if they're stromatolites or something, but they're really fantastic. These are awesome. $30 each. These would make fantastic cabochons. I see um, some folks out of Mexico taking a lower quality version of Moroccan, something similar from Morocco, and they're inlaying it with turquoise and stuff. That would be kind of sacrilegious to do to these pieces because they're so nice. 10 pieces for $18 each if you buy 10. Really, really cool. One kind of baby. I'm sorry? 14 pieces, 180. Yeah, so $18 each. Yes, but it's a small size. Oh, wow. Only $15 each if you buy 10 of the small ones. The small ones are actually pretty awesome, too, in their own way, because they're it's like a tighter. I saw recently, coming out of Russia, dinosaur bones that are pyrotized. Yes, that's all. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> How would you pronounce this name, my friend? Sorry? How would I like? Uh, green uh, granite. Oh, wow. Uvarite. Uvarovite. Yes. Uvarovite. Such a brilliant green. And there's some Russian tourmalines there. Can't really get into there at the moment. There's a story that I heard about Russian tourmalines that during the Second World War they were crushed up to get nickel like used as like a used as a ore and you hear that all the time like the um, Chrysocolla mines in uh, Arizona you know they destroy a lot of things that would probably be worth thousands of times more than its weight in copper. Um, as a specimen. But they get crushed up. You can't take the time to care, you know? I love Siberian. Well, this is... Maybe not Siberian, but wherever that is. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. And the rhodonite over there is really good. Whoever they have cutting this material is fantastic. Um, I do imagine it's probably shipped outside of Russia. These are super cool. I bought some of these from Armando and Son that were a little bit darker. Uh, this is the best price I've ever seen on these, actually. It's a Russian mass moss agate. 
I'm definitely gonna have to come back to this gentleman. Yeah. So everything here is Russian? Yes, all Russian. Those, those slabs over there are Russian as well? Yes, yes. How much are those? Just And that's, uh, under that tray, that's what that material is, right? This is 250 per kilo. Nice. 250 per kilo. Oh, thank you. Oh, just that piece? One, only one, yeah, about. Yes. Uh, 20, uh, 25. 25 dollars. Not bad. I'll go to the ATM and I'll see you soon, my friend. Really cool. This is cool that it comes from Russia. It's getting harder and harder to find quality Russian material, and you just don't see it like on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like you do other materials from around the world. Here's a really nice, beautiful dendritic piece. Beautiful, I'm coming back. Gotta get a slab of this. Totally cool, look at these beautiful pirate amorites. If you take a look at my first video from the Buena Vista gem show, you will see um, Zeke from Gem Quality Rock Shop. And Zeke has some Russian dinosaur bones that are pyratized. And he says that uh, it's really hard to get them. They've gone up three to ten times the price. And it's really hard to get. There's all different kinds of African materials. Natural African smoky citrines. Here's some of those um, amethysts that the gentleman around the corner had. Uh, really known for their scepters. This one is technically a scepter. This shaft is. The scepter part is small, but. Really nice, man. I see this again go for $250 to $600 a kilo. Everything is up right now. It's not just your electronics and your food. It's the minerals as well. Does that directly relate to those other things? <coughs> Here's some lighter color citrines. I would love to buy a flat of this. It's just, uh, they're not uncommon. Another one of those materials that you see a lot more African minerals for sale on Facebook than you do on like Instagram or anywhere else. So you can get this stuff year round, but it's uh, a little tough to find good quality and if you like send me a kilo are you gonna get you know a great kilo <laughs> then they have some cool faceting materials aquamarine it's expensive but uh, I don't know how many of these are actually fastened a good stone some peridot, ruby, two dollars a gram. Some garnets, some nice pink garnets. Here's some tumbled garnets. Some prenite, a very common and uh, affordable material. But doesn't it, it looks more expensive when it's on a plate with other nice faceted materials, you know? Here's some nice Tanzanian orange garnets. I do really enjoy those. 
It's pretty nice. Some yellows. But I really like it. You'll see a lot of folks from the Middle East also using paper plates. And uh, it's just, you can see it everywhere. It looks really good. It's really easy. The white on the back makes it easier to see the stone than if it was like a clear container or something, you know. Some nice is a sucker creek. Wow. It's so awesome to see just flats and flats of American material cut. Is this um this if it's not bigs, this is is this from Egypt? This, is it from America? Oh, I thought there was, uh, you know that there's an Egyptian version, it kind of looks sa slightly similar. It's a little lighter color. Who's doing the polishing? Me. I was going to ask because it's so good, you usually won't see that stuff from like, you know, the Philippines or something. Look at that, even if the gentleman is getting a lot of the cutting done and he's just doing the polishing, that's just thousands and thousands and thousands of cabs. Thousands of hours of this gentleman's hard work, even if it's just the polishing, right in front of you. It's super impressive. It's this the gentleman's lineage right before your eyes. Yeah, I was gonna say because a lot of these you can tell you use cerium oxide or Lindier. Over there, they probably maybe chrome oxide. The same. I'm using rapid. Polish. Rapid. It's called rapid. Polish. Never even heard of it before. Who makes it? I don't know where they sell it. Some guy made it for years and years and years. I think they still sell it. Well, these are stunning, brother. Thanks. This is thousands of hours of your life right here. Oh, yeah, <laughs> 50 years. <laughs> yeah. I've made my living for 50 years. And uh, you do a great job. Every single one has a good bezel for the smith. And I tell people, I'm like, a good shape and a good and a good girdle is gonna sell your stone faster than a larger one of the same quality that doesn't have a girdle or, or has a, that's in the shape of an oval. You know, your designer shapes plus your girdle, it's designed to be set in silver or gold. If it doesn't have it, you know, who are you making it for, you know? You just shine in a rock at that point. This is a stunning brother. What's your favorite material to cut? Um, I don't know. <laughs> it used to be fire all day. Oh, did you do contour carving or did you just do cabochons? Cabochons with a little bit of carving. Some Royal Imperial, I believe. This is Parcellus. Is that how you pronounce that material? It's, uh, some of it's Parcellus, but purple passion. Some of it's uh, Agua Nueva. Well, and that card's purple passion, which, okay. which is next to the Parcellus. So they look the same. Are you out of California? Oh, right here. Oh, oh nice. Where in Colorado? Boulder. Oh, awesome. This material, it eludes me, but I, I, I've seen it before. It's Masitsi. right, from Tibet. Jade. And is the jade mineral in it? It's not a nephrite, it's like a jadeite, right? I don't know. It looks great. I would say a jadeite. So you got to see Boulder evolve quite a bit, huh? Oh yeah, since 1965. Oh wow. How was it in the 60s? Was it awesome? I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah, I live the 60s to the full time. <laughs> You're an amazing cutter, brother. Thank you. I have a YouTube channel sponsored by Diamond Pacific where I teach people how to cut and cab and we do gear review. And uh, I think you have some of the best cabs I've seen at the show, period. Thank you. You're a fantastic cutter. <laughs>
Thank you. What's your name, brother? Gary. I'm David. David. Pleasure to meet you, Gary. Mm-hmm. Good luck on the show. Thanks. Yeah, to make a living cutting gifts, they gotta be good. And then, you know, when people can trust that they can actually use the cab, then they're gonna come back, they're gonna find you every year. Yeah. They know who to call. Exactly. Absolutely. Have a great one, brother. <laughs> that gentleman is an amazing cutter. My friend, where is the Dioptis, Dioptis from in Africa? From Congo. From the Congo. Is it hard to get because it's fragile? Uh, it's a... Uh, it depends. Mm-hmm. Depend, uh, oh, nice. Fantastic. Beautiful oh, bless, it's a five. I'm sorry? Oh, bless, it's five. Oh, nice. What is that secondary mineral on that? Is it just a clear deal like this? Is that quartz on there? Yes. Oh, wow. Never seen that before. Very, very nice. Is this... What is this? Um, Aragonite. Oh, nice. Uh, Aragonite. Yeah. I didn't know if it was what they call that hemomorphite or something, but it's just a crystalline aragonite, huh? Yeah. Beautiful. Are you from the Congo, my friend? No, I'm from, I'm from France. Oh, nice. Yeah, but my origin is Mali. Oh, nice. Yeah. Some of the best music over there. You got yeah. Tanara Wynn and Bambino over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Know, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love, I'm a guitar player, so if you're a guitar player and you don't know Mali music, you don't really play. <laughs> Have a great day. Wow, what is that? Is that coral? It looks like little straws. It has to be. Make sure it's right about though. Uh, you just wanna touch it and you'll wanna but it looks like it's already breaking apart. Only seventy dollars, it's not very expensive. Alright. Can I pay you? It must be coral because these there are also corals there. And the gentleman I was just standing next to. Um while I was filming those trays speaking French now he's over there speaking German he's 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 brilliant brilliant people just speaking all these languages and really probably got into the languages from traveling for gemstones he's just walking around buying the nicest things he sees yeah do my friend from Afghanistan, really nice quality. You can get low quality or you can get higher quality trash keys from over there. These are nice. Um, cabs are kind of hard to um, get and keep higher quality. I'm sure just like us when we buy from Afghanistan and big pieces, you know. Uh, they probably have to buy the whole lot, like the 50 kilo bag, you know. There's more of those African here with us. Those are most likely Uruguayan or Chinese. Some really low quality morganite here. It's Slivers of Kunza. Gosh, this stuff is so cool. It makes me so happy. <laughs> My friend Sprite many years ago gave me a piece to try to polish. These pieces right here are polished. And they did a good job. I tried to polish it and it just fell apart on me. It's kind of like trying to polish um, Kyanite. I don't know if you folks have ever tried to do that. It's tough. It is not easy to do. He 
even polished is feeling really good. Um, it's a really good polished one. Off the back natural, it's like flaking on me actually a little bit. Maybe they do this to the big pieces that break. I would rather have something like that. Really, really cool. You know what this green spot on here is? It's chrome oxide from when they polished the stone. It's hard to get out. You can get it out with uh, like a ultrasonic vibrator or uh, like a toothbrush or something. Are those dates? Are they good? Yeah, good. Oh, cool. I'll take one. Yeah. Take another one. Thank you. Yeah. You just chew them up? My dad eats it. So oh, okay. I think they have some kind of. Uh, I see them. them. Oh. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Oh, that gave me the chills. Not a big fan of the of the dates. I shouldn't have said anything. No, 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 it's fibrous. All these are apophyllites from East India. You would be absolutely surprised to find out how affordable these are. This is shaped like that using a saw. They don't even polish the backs and sides, which is totally cool. I bought a piece like that my friend for a friend for about $15 now some apophyllites oh look at that beautiful piece some apophyllites can be very expensive thousands of dollars when it has um, other minerals growing on it secondary minerals and stuff that's a great one right here Sorry, brother. And this one's really cool, too. But, um, yeah, some of them can be thousands of dollars depending on, like, what else is growing with them. But some of those that would look like they'd be thousands, literally. So we'll be just over a hundred. The apophyllite game is really weird. Those are also apophyllites. They look like quartz crystals, but they're apophyllite. They're really soft. You can't really work with them. Like if... Yeah. It's kind of tough to sell apophyllites at a venue like this. But I think it's one of those stones that work really 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 good um and a gem shop because you get a lot of people who don't really live the gem scene apophyllites you know knock if you've had to know 20 basic stones apophyllite probably isn't one of them so it's definitely something good to have in your like uh to have in your shop if you're selling retail and such. These stands are really cool. Love the Hubei turquoise cylinder slices there. Very cool. Very, very awesome. So, 50 minutes and we're still in the same rounded place.
totally nuts. I can make a 10 hour video of just this one spot. This right here is 18,000 for that beautiful Kunzai. This one doesn't have a price on it. Which makes sense. It's one of those, if you gotta ask, you probably can't afford it, right? But how do you ask when you can't afford it and you wanna buy it? That's a great top piece right there. Totally stunning. Well, that date made me thirsty. It's probably really good for you. You probably brought him over here overseas. That's a sweet piece, but that one is extraordinary. Here's some cool Pakistani aqua with some other minerals. What is that? That's a ruby and marble back there. Let's see if I can get this to zoom. Ruby and marble is 3,500. This emerald right there is bad to the bone. That's uh, fifty-six hundred dollars. This is beautiful. Tourmaline with quartz. The quartz has a nice formation too. That's only twenty-two hundred. Topaz, 4,500. Wow, look at that back in there, jeez. Is that quartz with tourmaline? It has to be. Absolutely fantastic. So in New Mexico, there's people finding smoky quartz out of Cuesta, New Mexico, that grows with aquamarine. And uh, one of my friends, who I, I don't know if he wants to be named, found an amazing piece where the aquamarine was right in the middle in a forest of smoky quartz popping out the sides and such. Uh, I'd love to go up there. I'm sure they don't really want me to film up there. I don't even know if it's legit. I don't even know if I want to film over there. These look like Herkimers, don't they? They're from Pakistan. They're very, very similar. Maybe it's me, or maybe it's I'm a hippie, and I think I can feel the difference. <laughs> but I think I can see the difference, too. I'm sure the, the Just Hurt Squirrels can definitely tell the difference between the two. These even smaller, yeah. These are the micros. This gentleman's booth is is really, really fantastic. He has an amazing Pakistani materials.
what an amazing world we live in, huh? And then here are some that the gentlemen uh, or the people working for them have drilled. That is not easy. I imagine you have to use a sonic drill. And then what, is the hole a quarter of a millimeter? Maybe? That's very impressive. One more scoop of the micros. Okay. I'm sure no vendor wants somebody to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get lost. <laughs> so I hear you can either heat or chill Tiger's Eye to turn it red or blue. Don't know which one is which. It's definitely one of those materials I prefer to buy instead of cutting. It's not particularly easy to cut. And then again, like, yeah, like something this size is $10. If you were to buy the rough for $4 a pound and then try to cut it, what are you gonna have to charge? It's just so much better to buy it already polished. And it's also dirty and some people argue that it's poisonous, but I prefer to buy the material instead of cutting it myself. But I don't know. Do you work here? Oh. <laughs> I was gonna ask, do you know, like, the, the turn it blue or red by either heating it up or chilling it, I don't know which one's which. Everyone, you probably instant thought, red's gotta be heat, right? <laughs> Blue's gotta be cold. Maybe. But I don't know. Really cool. What are these things called? I've been seeing these a lot the last like three or four years. Don't know what they're called. Um, what is this called? Do you know the name? A Vivianite. Awesome. Uh, it's kind of fragile, so I'm not going to touch it, obviously. It can be a cool emerald green like that. I've been seeing a lot of this the last couple of years. Is it from Brazil? Yeah. Oh, nice. Those are cool. Beautiful crystals. But, uh, yeah, I've been seeing a lot of that material lately. Look at that. Is this from, um, the gentleman who makes those awesome agate books? Yeah. I believe so. I don't know. Awesome. He's like, these are the new, uh, 2027 20, calendars. You just kind of write it. Like Will it work in 2027? Yes. I don't know. That's what he was saying. Oh. That's, That's what, what he was saying, saying, but... Oh, uh, good enough. Yeah, right? He's got to hold on to it. Well, we'll find out, right? In the meantime, it looks beautiful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Have a great day, y'all. Yeah, you too. All right. There's a young man. I don't know if he's here. I think it might be that gentleman over there. He's mining his own material. For the artisans. Hey, brother, do you know what this is? Um, let me ask real quick. I'm not going to hurt I buy a lot of, um, I was buying a lot of Alicia from these guys for $40 a pound uh, during my very first Tucson gem show. They're really, really, this is the Odyssey family if you folks haven't figured that out already. $200 a pound, this was $300 a pound in Tucson. Um, all the family, they all mine. Uh, different claims and such. I don't know if they're like charging the family to, like, hey, you're gonna pay to work this land and you can charge what you want. Maybe. Probably Sonoran or something. Um, Mexican, probably, huh? Well, he's still deciding on the name. He says he knows it, but it's just out of his head right now. That's fine. What is it? A hundred a pound? Oh, I believe so. Oh, that's fucking yeah. Yeah. Not bad. I like it. I just got to stay away from the greens. Or I'll buy all green. I got to start cutting for what people like to see. Exactly. And not. You cab your own material? Yeah. Right on, oh, dude. Yeah. That's cool. I yeah. cab a lot. of. I get a lot of stuff from your family. Oh, cool. Yeah. I've um, been doing cabochon since I got out of high school in 2019. So oh, nice. So I make my living. You never had to work at TJ Maxx, huh? No. <laughs> Luckily, I don't even have one in Tonopah. Is that material over there some of the higher end stuff that was in Tucson this year? Um, the rough? Yeah. I think it was Tristan's. 
Oh, so that's his brother Lane. I don't know. I didn't go to Tucson, so I don't know. If is he's Tristan gone. here this year? Nope. He's uh, working, huh? Yeah. Well, he says he's working. Yeah. I ain't no I time what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Probably out digging rocks or something. Something weird. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, cool. It's nice to meet you. I'm Brad. I'm David. Pleasure to meet you, man. Right Big fan of this gentleman. And the rest of your family. Yes, Kenneth's a great guy. He's one of all our favorites. <laughs> Absolutely. What is this material here? Hubei. Stabilized Hubei. Um, Lane deals a lot in it. It's actually getting pretty hard to get. There was some, oh yeah, especially anything good. Like with the patterns. Yeah, you Tristan was pulling out some stuff that looked like some really good Hubei. Oh. But it was rock solid. I think it was $12 a gram. Rough. Damn. In Tucson, and it was worth it. I just, I just I don't have that the, kind of money. The blackjack took place. Blackjack kind of has the same. Thing. <laughs> um, really awesome. It's a lane rock. Oh uh, yeah, it's a blackjack. I don't know if that's the same stuff. Tristan that is awesome. Oh, here comes trouble. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, sir? Good. You have some stabilized. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, you can tell. Yeah. Well, they did a good job. Not all stabilization is done the same, and, no. or even close to the same quality. There's only, only one person we all use. It comes yeah. out good. Good luck, David. See you later. That's awesome. Yeah, there's some great rough on What's the rough going for of that material? Fuck 50 a gram, I believe, Lane said. Dollar 50 a gram. It's got another polish on here. Beautiful. A lot of just electric greens, and then every once in a while, it'll turn out some high grade blue. Star Fox Ferris, I've never even heard of it. Yep, it's we located the Star Fox in the summer of 2016. Oh, cool. Yep, we stopped to dig on a little tiny white vein and just junk. I don't even know what it was, and I got to look it in. There was big float chunks of it, but it was bleached red from the sun and the minerals washing down, so I couldn't even tell it was Verisite. Oh, wow. Took the hammer and broke it because it looked suspicious. And next thing you know, How you doing, brother? Good, how are you? Good to see you, my I've friend. I've over here, but I was busy. Oh, you're insane. always busy, brother. <laughs> so did you discover it? Yeah. It was actually me and Lane together. You found it. That feels good, I huh? I was next to him when you found it. <laughs> we're looking um, over. Was the finder, you were the receiver? <laughs> It was like one of those holy crap moments. There's a verisite coming out of the ground. <laughs> um, this isn't stabilized, is it? No, that's natural. Hoover. I wish it was. <laughs> you'd, get a, you'd get a lot out of it, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, is this? Yeah, this this stuff is. Yep. Awesome. Very cool. Wait for him to be done with. It. Oh, there's scales all over the place over here. Yes, sir. This is a really cool piece. So a lot of people might think, oh, why would you ever want stabilized? Well, you get so much yield from your stone. I'd rather have yield and charge a little bit less. Like having a good stone yield more material, charging a little bit less for being stabilized, usually is worth more than a stone that's going to break on you that's natural, that's worth a lot more. That's, that's our theory. Exactly. Spot on. It should have a gram mode too if you want to change to that. Press the M, I think. Get it to grams. Grain. What is a grain? That's what GN stands for, right? Yeah, I believe. I know it's used is that in what like gold? loading rifles or loading oh, shell yeah. casings. A hundred grain is uh, black, the traditional black powder. Yeah. yeah oh, it's, like oh that. yeah. So this piece is eighty-two dollars and sixty-six cents. Every cab you get out of it, you probably get forty-four dollars, forty-five bucks, maybe. Pay for it in two pieces. Pay for it in two pieces, and then you have four, four and a half more pieces to work with. Let's weigh out a couple more. You folks take a card, of course, right? You take a card, of course, right? Yeah, definitely. This one is fantastic. All right. 
this one is 109 I bet you these nice people would take $100 for it. Uh, same thing. Beautiful. That's probably a $60, $70 piece. So, this piece would, I think, would definitely produce more than that square. Oh, and then there's some treasures that's hard to see on the inside of. That's cool. I've never seen them sell stabilized hoisting before. That is awesome. Uh, for a lot of people who are new to the turquoise game, selling uh, a material like hoisting is kind of a really easy way to get your money back because people who don't really know turquoise usually know Royston. They know Royston, they know Kingman, Sleeping Beauty. Um, it's kind of a super popular material. I might have to buy, but I'm going to hide that guy, hiding in it, the back for that guy, and I'm going to have to get some of that. I'm excited to see that they have stabilized voicing. Most of the pieces I ever bought, you don't really have to stabilize. <laughs> it's a good way to do stuff where you're going to go. You know, you couldn't. The Zeus Parasite. It's a classic Kingman. This blackjack is really cool. I love the ribbons in it. and I bet you that material is coming from that rock. And then a lot of people know the voice and ribbon is a good way to get some more yield out of some veinier pieces. Depending on how big the vein is, you can cut down the vein and get a piece that has a large surface area, but then you only get one or two pieces out of a big piece of rough. Uh, that'll look more like this. But some people really just love the ribbon. I love the ribbon, especially when it has a little bit more play than just a single band down the stone. Yeah, I like these Royston pieces with character way more than the pure blue. Well, yes and no. She has a friend who makes jewelry. Here's some uh, um, Rube, and most likely from that stabilized so We'll go up and take a class from her. Fantastic. Danny boy. Tree frog. This is an Audison owned mine. The dark moon is fantastic. It's a Verisette, I believe. STB Hube. I don't know. Is it carried for this material? If it was a carrot, something like this would be. And some odd dollars. Probably get it. Probably get it for free. You know, money talks. And these folks are super kind. The whole family is just so nice. When I first met that gentleman, um, he sold me a, 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 a bunch of Alicia for an amazing price. It was kind of like their show special. Then he gave me two big chunks of uh, uh, 
white buffalo and just put them in my backpack. Like, that's in one of my earlier videos. I got it all on film. It's so cool. It's really awesome thing. These clutches are nice. Someone commented in my video saying that these right here, these cones were not done via represe. Pretty sure they are. Uh, maybe they used forming things and they hit it from the top to make it push out from the front. I don't think so. I think it is represe. But uh, I haven't done this style of stuff in a long time. It's made in East. Oh, Native American. Okay. This turquoise looks fantastic. Is it Ithaca Peak? Is it Kingman? I don't know. This is a really good knowledge shot. I like the light color spots on uh, this turquoise and the basil. The stamped uh, half round or quarter round wire on top of the backing. It's not the bezel, it's the quarter around that was stamped onto the backing. That looks so good. <laughs> this turquoise is so jimmy. If you didn't buy it directly from these folks, you probably wouldn't really even know that it was legit. It's so glassy. An assortment of rings using their material. It must be so awesome to be part of this family. It's an opportunity to flesh out your turquoise dreams, you know. You know, I tell people all the time, how do you get how do you get big in the jewelry industry? You have a unique product. Like the Otteson family. They have multiple unique turquoises that they own the mine for. Then, you ship it away overseas to be made to mass produced. Oh, look at that. That's the black deck. What is this going for? Uh, it goes for $2,500 a pound. $2,500 a pound. Glassy. Very hard. It's hidden away for someone right now. <laughs> They're gonna come back and get the whole bucket? Uh huh. Planning on it. Find the bucket. Heck yeah. It paid for itself. This bucket's probably what? 18 pounds. 18 pounds. Mm -hmm. That would make your show. <laughs> but um, like I was saying about like you, you have a unique product. They own this mine. They own it. You don't get this material unless someone's selling it to you that bought it from them, or they're selling it to you directly. Then you mail that material away to be made into affordable jewelry, perhaps in East India or the Philippines. Then you mail it away to be made and to high-end jewelry. This is probably made in Gallup. And, uh, man, that was so kind of him to bust out this high-end material just for me to look at. I love the yellow turquoise so much. Turquoise comes in literally every color. This family has even found natural purple. And what I heard from Zeke from Gem Quality Rock Shop is that the natural purple happens from a natural heat treating process. Like you can heat up vericite somehow to get it to turn purple. Phosphoren Phosphorendite? Phosphorendite? Is a heated... Well, is a phosphate. And I think the rumor was is that it was heated somehow naturally from the earth and turned purple. Anyway, they found every color you can think of. Yellow, it, that is real, that is real. Hydrated aluminum phosphate, or hydrated copper phosphate. I would love to dig through this bucket, but... Don't, wow, that, right there. 
Every single inch of this material is a producer. This is probably just over half a pound. So, 1300 bucks. The problem isn't that are you going to be able to create material that is worth what you pay? It's or do you have the clientele that can appreciate such high quality material? Hey, brother, I'm going to hand this back to you. I don't want it sitting up here and somebody like... Dude, thank you for sharing that with me, dude. You're welcome. You and your family are uh, off the chain, dude. <laughs> Take it easy, my friend. Some dino stuff. We chatted with these folks last year in Tucson. Uh, not Tucson, uh, Denver. This is mostly what I wanted to see. It's just a big gem bone. Like people would make cabochons out of. But it's on a base with another bone. <coughs> and it's a sculpture. Hey, Lynn, I brought home a <laughs> dinosaur bone for you. That's cool. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> Allosaurus bite marks. Maybe it was a Fred Flintstone bite mark. Who knows? Those are just, oh, these are, so that material, that big piece over there, is usually what I would see people cut into pieces like this for cabochons. Uh, a lot of reds. My favorite are the purples and the yellows, but it's kind of just a color preference. They're all great. What is your favorite color of dinosaur bone? Uh, blue. I'll go with blue. She's a blue lady. Nice. Oh, fantastic. Really cool. Sweet gem from JNS Rocks to Gems. Is a dinosaur bone freak? I was in his shop when he misplaced it and he couldn't get to work until he found it. That's a really interesting piece. The cell structures are really wide. Really cool. Do you folks do all your own cutting for the gem bone? That's awesome. The reason I was going to ask, what is a good final polish? Like cerium oxide or Lindier? A lot of people like to use Fabuluster. Really? It's so really like... Good. Like a 1200 and yeah. then Fabuluster and then... Like, like the compound bar. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Because yeah. I know it's like... But they also go to like six to 8,000. Oh, before that, just to... Yeah. So it doesn't undercut. I I actually like the undercutting. When it... when that this, It's not for everybody, but I, I like when it's like all popping up and... Oh man. So Fabuluster is an aluminum oxide inside of a con like a bar. It's like in some kind of matrix so that it can be um, applied to a yeah buffing wheel. It doesn't advertise any stones on it. It advertises like copper, gold, and silver, but it works really well. Just like Zam. Zam though does advertise turquoise, probably just from 50 years of people using it for turquoise. Really cool. Whoever's doing the cutting for them is doing a really good job. Some of these pieces don't really have a kernel. Some of them have a gray kernel. I wonder if it's coming from many different cutters or something. I do have to get away from this booth, though, um, because of the music that's playing over there. Before we go, that's uh, Pueblo Pottery. Anasazi Pottery. Really cool. Here's some gem bones, 65 to $100 each. Are you guys gem bone people? I'm a gem bone person. At the Buena Vista, not Buena Vista, the Durango Four Corners Gem Show, I bought a bunch of pieces, uh, really high quality, about this quality, for Sweet Gem. Then I met a gentleman who bought pieces from that person before I met that person who sold me about five or six more pieces, all about this size. This is not a bad piece for 25 bucks. Definitely, that was in the market, uh, the first day you want to come here. One person's going to go through 5 and 10, 15, 25 dollar bin and pick out all the sweethearts. That right there, that's worth every penny of, oh, 35 bucks rough and you can easily make, 
I'd say a $75 cab out of that. I did just sell both of the pieces of dinosaur bone that I cut on TikTok and YouTube live. One's going to my good friend Tim, and I have to check my invoices to find out who the other one's going to. But they got a screaming deal. The pieces I sold them were worth, one of them was worth $95, the other one was worth about 105 I was hoping. This, I've been seeing a dude on TikTok split these. It takes a big sheet and splits them to expose these layers of fossils. And sometimes he'll break, the fossil will break. And they use Elmer's glue, just regular old Elmer's glue to put it back together. Pretty awesome. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I've heard of people repairing guitars with Elmer's glue. I'm not a big believer in Elmer's glue, but... So... That guy right there is... That's Vince Allred. I've never met him, but he's one of my best friends. He is the... Kind of like the... Public relations person for Easy Cab. The Easy Cab lapidary machine is a fantastic machine. It's made in Utah, and he harvests this material. He sent me two large, fantastic pieces of this material. One of this variation, and then one of this variation. From the outside, it looks like cheese. <laughs> I haven't done anything with it yet. I've kind of just been given small pieces of it away because I dropped it and it kind of broke in half. But uh, Vince Allred, he's such a sweetheart. If you're looking for a machine that's not the everyday machine or you're just shopping around to see what's out there, take a look at Easy Cab on Facebook. Easy Cab. If you get one, let him know Lapidary Dave sent you. He always butters my biscuit and supports the channel when I send people his way. But, um... He's a good guy. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I've heard people say that this material is considered one of the youngest opals ever discovered. This is an opal. Does it look like your everyday opal? Uh, not uh, what people would perhaps call precious opal. This material is very affordable. Um, I have seen them mail it away to get stabilized. I talked to Zeke at Gem Quality Rock Shop. He says he doesn't have to stabilize his. Wildfire Bubble Opal, Milford, Utah. I've heard it called um, All Red Wildfire. That's a diamond chainsaw Vince is working there. I love that guy. I was a big baby one time when I first got my machine from him. And uh, it has nice inch threads on the side. And I lifted the machine by the arbor like you're never supposed to do. And I cut my hands on the thread. And I called him and I'm like, you need to get this dang machine out of here, blah, 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 blah. Like I had to deal with for a long time when I used to work for Cap King. And uh, he was super cool and calm and walked me through it. And I felt like such a baby. <laughs> yelling at him like that, but... You know, I got my fair share of that later when I started working for the Cab King Company doing customer service. Nobody calls you to tell you how much they love your machine. They call you to tell you that, they're, that they've been crying all week because they can't figure anything out. Or that they want to beat you up because they spent all that money. I love you, Vince. Everyone check out Vince Allred. Not just an awesome miner, not just a um, distributor of some of the coolest lapidary gear in the industry, made in America, but also a great guy. I love the taxidermy peoples. Oh my god. Look at these. These donkeys, Jaws? Oh, the frogs. Poor buddies. I think these are invasive, right? And they hurt a lot of a lot of uh, native species or something. Are all these cane toads like from Colombia or something? From Australia. Are they like an invasive species or something? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, they're doing all kinds of things to try and get rid of them. To make some shoes, yeah, like some boots where the head's at the front. Oh, really? That'd be cool. That'd be cool. <laughs> they're awesome. I like the grumpy ones. I wonder how they're killing them to where they're not destroying them. Oh, I'm, I'm Maybe like a yeah. blow dart. <laughs> <laughs> are these dried bats? Yeah, these are dried bats. Trippy, but awesome. Look at these guys. Is those the Jesus lizards? Water or something. Very cool.